So hello, look what we have. It's the only copy in Britain at the moment. And what, I might say, because it is the Beowulf Oracle by John Matthews and Virginia Chandler, uh, and also with art by Joe Machine, um, and a few little bits by myself, which I'll discuss when we get to it. But uh, I'm not the one who's conceived this, it's really John. So let's have a look. It's got a slidey art box. There we go. And here's the book. Let's have a... I'm a flip from the back person, I'm afraid. So, so we have text and readings and we have things about the each of the cards. I'll just open on one. So this is Higd and she has... Um, a grand, very valiant queen, high in the hall, Higd made strong by the journey, wise, honoured. Though her winters were few, she remained within walls. Herepes, Herethe's daughter, not bending nor sparing grace from the Gyat prince. So there we are. So there's um, something for her as hero, something for her as challenger. And then there is the weaving of the Norns, which are sort of kennings, which... Uh, Tell us a little bit more about the the issue. So that's all there. Oh look, we have runes as well. <coughs> and right. So there's a lot about what how this story began, um, because of course this is a Saxon story, um, one of the oldest um, of the stories from um, the old English period. Let's see what we have in here. Um, and what do we have? We have um, the first three cards out are the three Norns. So they're Skuld, um, the Dandy and Urd. So they are the spinners of fate and they are the ones um, who have a little bit more knowledge than we have because of course they have a very otherworldly perspective. Um, and when we have a question it's nice to get uh, a nice bit of triangulation on your question because we don't always see things from our perspective um, in a clear way and sometimes taking another view just helps. So those cards are in black and white but those are the only ones who are in black and white so I'll leave those there. And here's the chap himself, Beowulf. So this artwork is all by Joe Machine, who's a fantastic international artist um, who does very large canvases um, and, and very beautiful and very interesting work. So here we have um, some more of the cards here to look at. So some of these are the characters within Beowulf and um, to find out more about um, how they work, I I'll ask John who is behind the camera. So, uh, I am indeed. Um, so tell us more. Well, you've seen already that the, that we start off with the three Norns, who, if you like, are the, the 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 influencing agencies within these. But the basic idea of the oracle is, like any other oracle, that you are asking them questions. You're working with these characters, and in this case, you have uh, you have a set of characters here, who uh, male and female. You, it's not all just about brawny lads with swords. Um, who are there to help um, and they will act as companions on a journey and the journey you'll take is around the great mysterious and wonderful world tree of um, Norse tradition called Yggdrasil mm. and on Yggdrasil there are lots of different places and different worlds and different meanings and different ideas so when you make a reading with these, you'll be laying out your cards. There are several different kind of readings um, I've included, but uh, in particular, there is the main one, which, as I said, is the tree Yggdrasil. Now there you're seeing, because it's not all fun and games, is your three main challengers, though everyone can act as a challenger too. And in this case, we have the monster Grendel, who in the poem uh, snatches away people at night and they're never seen again. But Beowulf manages to deal with this great Grendel in the story. 
But he has to deal still with an even more fearsome one, does he not? Indeed, it looks as though there might be a bit of trouble ahead here. But yes, this is because Grendel's mother is not too keen on the fact that Beowulf killed her son, and so she comes after him. And yes, he does survive, but later on he has to face the great worm, the dragon. Uh, and Virginia was particularly pleased about this because she's a great expert on dragons and, and is really writing dragons. dragon uh, anthologies <coughs> and books and oracles herself at this moment. And on your journeys, you occasionally a <laughs> get a couple of special helping objects to help you along. In this case, it's a cup, which uh, for some people might remind them of the Grail, but in this case, it's part of the dragon's treasure that Beowulf rescues. And there's the great sword, Hrunting, which gives you a nice um, edge. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. So can I shuffle them together then? You can shuffle oh, them together. Excellent. <clears throat> I does love a little bit of a shuffle. Let's have a look and see. So as, as Kathleen said, the Beowulf poem, which dates in the current form that we have from the 10th century, um, is a very ancient story. And it really is one of those great hero stories. And it probably sounds very masculine, but in fact, there's a lot of sensitivity within it as well. Not only from the Norns themselves, but also from the queens, the princesses, the wives and the lovers of the various characters. Right. So these are separate, yes? They're separate. OK, so I'm just going to make them and put them there. <clears throat> OK, so do we have a question? Um, I let's must admit, I didn't come prepared with a question. OK. But if you've got one... So let's, um, let's ask a question. I have a lot of courses coming up uh, this year, and I have a new course that's coming. Um, so I'm going to ask about what I need to know about this course and what I might need to be prepared for. So I've shuffled these cards, so um, do I choose them randomly or do I choose them by looking at them? Well, you can do either. If you've looked through them and you feel particularly drawn to one character or two characters, it's a good idea not to have too many at the same time. Then um, you can choose them that way or you can let the fates indeed uh, decide. I, I like, I always do like um, a, a random card. So let's have a look and see what we have here. So I've come up with, whoops. So I have the unfaithful. Ah. Oh my, oh mm. my, oh my. So, so I don't know who they are. Um, well, I presume that they're the lot that didn't show up. They're the ones who didn't stand by Beowulf when he needed them. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And they do represent that okay. kind of failure sometimes to have your supporters on your side as you'd like them to be. Okay, so now I have to find where they are. Um, towards the end. Towards the end of the story. Okay, let's have a look. Um, that's the sword and the cup. Oh, there they are. I found them. Okay. So, um... So the idea is what? Well, you find a little bit about them, but I've already told you that. Yes. Uh, and then underneath you have um, uh, uh, sayings that they, advice that they give, right. either as challengers or companions. Okay. So are you taking this one with you as a challenger or a companion? Um, I think they probably ought to challenge me because um, this is a new course. And so there is so much I don't know about it yet that... Um, um, that would be a good idea. Okay, so, so then you look in the book and you find what the challenger statement okay, is. Okay, so the challenger statement is, are you truly prepared to face your darkest fears or will you run from them like a coward? Few know of what they are capable, but all the paths have their challenges, as indeed they must. Otherwise, why would you choose to follow this road? So too, not all weird is good. Sometimes it is better to turn away. But on these paths you are challenged to keep advancing. In your life too you will find moments when you will seek to turn back. But to do so brings only greater pain and fear. If you are strong you will conquer. If not, turn away now. Well, it's booked, so I'm going on. Um, so what happens now? Well, you also find following on that, me on that uh, particular meaning there is, is, is a kenning. And you mentioned this yourself at the beginning. And you came in quite late on in the production mm. of this um, 
because we decided we want to extend the, the influence of the Norns mm. a little bit. So the, really the Kennings come from the Norns. Okay. So you can read the Kenning for this character. Ooh, so this is a very challenging Kenning. So Nithing is the name of nothing. Nithing is a gap of night. Nithing is the one who promised, ran away, being called to fight. Nithing speaks, but nothing answers. Nithing leaves no certain track. Nithing is the coward's calling. Nithing turns his faithless back. Yet, if you can bind the Nithing, oaths of fealty, sacred sworn, Nithing can be something faithful and be glad that he was born. So I find that really interesting because my course is um, about um, different early forms of uh, Celtic divination. Um, and so for me, this is always the uncertainness that, that lies in the gap of everyone's question. And um, when we turn to look at um, uh, how a question should be answered or how we are to proceed, how we are to understand and interpret the answer, everyone kind of becomes a bit like the unfaithful, um, that they'd rather run away and hide now, please, because they don't have any kind of certain direction. But actually, um, when you do define, there are always messages and interesting trails which don't show all of themselves. And so um, going a little bit down the road of the faithful, um, of the unfaithful, um, it's like there's always a turning back point um, I think for us all and um, that when we turn around and face the thing that we don't know or face the thing that we don't see then that would probably be um, a good way to um, to go onward and oaths of fealty can be sacredly sworn so yeah so yes that's fine so basically everyone on the course will be a little fearful of the can they do it are they able to do it and so my job will be to, um, I suppose, be a bit Beowulfy and stand in the gap and wave my sword a bit. Anyway, we'll see. Well, that's the kind of yeah. uh, the basic answer, if you like. Yeah. I mean, you can develop it further uh, if you want by yeah. asking one of the Norns, um, or you can also um, take it further by finding a, 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 cha a supporter, a champion. We call right. them champions. Right. So you can you could pick a champion, pick a champion and too. see if the champion gives you extra strength oh, okay. Let's in your see task. What the champion has to show me. Because I would say, if I were reading this, I would say that it says, just be careful when you uh, undertake this challenge. You know, you're you're ready to face it, but you might need a little help. Okay, so I've got Higluck. Is that how you say it? Higluck. Higluck. Okay. I'm afraid my Saxon is not very well developed. So. Well, I have, let me just say that, <laughs> that Virginia's part in this was very, very important because she studied the Anglo-Saxon myths and, and literature at college and she made not only a, a retelling of the story of Beowulf, for those who don't know it, but she also did a lot of the translation that was necessary for quotations and so forth. So, oh, uh, is... so her part was a very important one. This is great. So he's the, the king of the Geats, um, and he's um, Beowulf's uncle, basically, um, it says here. Um, and um, <clears throat> he arrived just in time to save uh, a group of, of warriors who were being overrun. So that sounds like a good idea. So let's have a look and see what he has to say as a hero and champion. Listen to the call of my horn. When it is blown, it calls great power from the gods. Those who hear it grow stronger. Those I accompany will see much that was hidden. They will be called upon to look within and to see the patterns that shape their lives from past to present to future, as the Norns decree. I stand at your side and defy the things that make you weak. I give aid to your strength until it is no longer needed. My wisdom grows from the roots of the great tree. It carries the weight of the ancestors. Whether you know these or not, they are there. Their wisdom is in your blood, even though you cannot name them. Listen to their song and follow where they lead. Okay, so let's see what the Kenning has to say. Those who venture where the gods walk know their pathways over, through. Who would have trustworthy guidance follow in these footsteps true? Your soul kindred stand beside you. 
incantations to imbue. Great. So we need to call on the ancestors when we do our work. So that's nice and clear. So there, I've got a nice sort of um, answer to this. But I think there are other ways of using the cards other than yes. um, this particular one, yes? Yes, there are. I mean, we can't go into all of them now. No. Um, but uh, the, basically, you, you continue to ask those who come from that deep place, mm -hmm. the wisdom of the North, as it calls itself in the book, um, that uh, will enable you to overcome obstacles and find strength and answering energies within them. Right. So I hope you find it uh, useful and helpful. Uh, unfortunately, it won't be available here in England until probably towards the end of November. So you might still get one for Christmas if you want to, uh, but it's already released in the United States. So um, you can rush around to your nearest shop or or look it up on amazon and there you'll find it <gasps> no the dreaded amazon and the dreaded amazon <laughs> indeed yes and i think it's uh i think it's 29.99 dollars in america and about 23.99 pounds here indeed i believe so yeah. look and out for this it's got a decent box it's like the cards and the, and the things are not too huge which is great because um I always find huge boxes really a little challenging um, in my many collection of, of divinatory things. So, so thank you. So that's Beowulf Oracle, and um, I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs>